Okay, hi. Um, hopefully this works this time. It looks like I went through the whole live stream and it, it cut out or something. I'm not really sure. Um, hopefully this is working. Um, still not really seeing it work. Okay, it looks like we are live. Okay, great. Hi, I'm Sandy Roberts and I'm the Makerspace Coordinator for the Warren County Library System. Um, this is Friday STEAM, where we take science, technology, engineering, art, and math, mash them all up and come up with fun projects for you. Um, today we're making seed bombs. So what are seed bombs? These are. These little balls uh, that we're going to use upcycled paper pulp and some seeds are meant to be thrown into areas where there aren't plants, where maybe soil is eroding, being washed away by water and wind. Um, and they're meant to be able to plant native seeds or vegetables or herbs in those areas. So if you know of some spots around your house or your community that look like they could use some color, or that maybe you'd like to attract things like butterflies or bees and give those very, very important pollinators that we need to pollinate our food extra resources, seed bombs are a great way to do that. These also make really nice gifts for Mother's Day, so you can color them up and make them look really beautiful and give mom maybe an easy way to plant a garden. These came about with uh, the environmental uh, movement of the 60s and 70s, where there was a lot of interest in transforming maybe empty lots and cities or dividers between highways and giving them some beauty, making them useful habitats for animals and wildlife and insects, and also, as I said, to stop that erosion. That continues today, and I'm sure that there are areas that you can think of that could use that. Now, there are a couple of very important things about using seed bombs. First off, you do not go using them in protected wildlife areas, okay? So if you're hiking on a trail or you're at the lake or something like that, you don't want to use them there. That could be a really big problem because there may be special species of plants or animals and you could actually introduce something that would be a problem. And you also generally don't want to go throwing these onto somebody else's lawn without permission, okay? It's much better to make the seed bombs and give them as a gift, okay, than potentially get yourself into a situation where you may be causing more trouble than you should be. So, what do we need today? Pretty easy supplies today. You're going to start off with some old newspaper or materials like that, okay? Um, I like to use uh, matte, not glossy uh, newspaper or circulars because uh, you always have them around. But if you don't, maybe you have some leftover copy paper from a previous project or perhaps you have some construction paper sitting around or maybe you have old paper bags from groceries. Um, anything like that will work. We're basically going to take this we're going to put it in water, we're going to use some mechanical energy, some mechanical work um, to break down this paper and free up the wood pulp that's inside the paper. And once we do that, we're going to get all those fibers out into the water, we're going to get rid of the water, and we're going to recombine those fibers into the form of our little ball shape here for our seed bombs. Now keep in mind, once you've made this paper clay, basically, that we're making, you can use it for lots of things. If you've ever made paper, it's the same process. You can press it into a sheet of paper. You can take it and put it into a cupcake mold or into a really cool silicone mold meant for like candies or jello, and you can give it a really cool shape. So this paper clay is very easy to make. Um, you don't have to go out to the arts and crafts store or anything. You can make it right at home, and you can use it for all kinds of different things. So that's what I love about it. It's the special cellulose in the paper that kind of glues everything back together. Um, so you can you can uh, repulp this paper over and over and over again this way and make really beautiful things with it. Okay, so you need some kind of paper. Next, I'm just checking everything working okay. Looks like everything's working okay. All right, but I'm not really... Okay, yeah, yeah. All right. You're also going to need, aha, this is a big important one, ah, a blender. All right. This is the blender I use just for crafting. Okay. I don't use it for anything else. We're not doing anything toxic with it. So you can use this blender from your kitchen, but make sure you check in with mom and dad first because they may not appreciate that. And it needs to be cleaned really well when you're done. So if you're going to use your kitchen blender, make sure you clean it really well. If you don't have a kitchen blender to use for this, or a craft blender, or leftover, I got this one at the thrift store. Um, if you don't have that, you can put everything into a sealable Ziploc style bag. 
um, and mush it up with your hands. It might take a little bit longer. You may not get quite as fine a, a, a mash, but you can try a potato masher. You can try all kinds of different ways. The idea is to take mechanical energy, mechanical action, and use that to break apart those fibers so you can put them back together, together again. Blender is the easiest way to do it, but there are lots of other ways. All right, so that's my blender. I'll just leave that here for now. You are going to need a colander or a strainer and a bowl or a sink to catch your water in. Which brings me to, you need water. Tap water is fine. Doesn't need to be anything fancy. Um, good to have a measuring cup uh, for your water, but you can eyeball this one. It's pretty forgiving. Um, and most importantly, where did I put them? You need seeds. For this project, you really want to try to use something that is a native plant. What does that mean? Okay. Let's talk about what it means to be a native versus a non-native or an invasive plant. Here we go. We're going to switch over. Okay. So, native plants. They're species that have evolved over time for the conditions at that location. They're part of the ecosystem, and often they play a really important role. They may provide habitat, they may provide food, or some other service that contributes to that area's biodiversity and to the other species in it. Um, they have kind of an ecological checks and balance system that keeps them under control, so like plants might be eaten by a spe specific uh, type of animal like rabbits and that makes sure that they don't overgrow and take over an area and end up competing for resources. It's a very delicate system but native plants have evolved in that spot, in that area, in that bioregion for that purpose. So you can see here I have a little picture. This is an anemone. It's a common spring flower that you may be able to find in the woods. Now. Non-native plants are species that haven't evolved under those local conditions, but were introduced from somewhere else in the world. Usually, obviously, this is through human help, okay? So any plant or animal that has come to a new region with human help is considered a non-native plant. This can happen for a lot of reasons. In the case of decorative plants, we get a lot of plants from all over the world and people want to plant them in their yard. Sometimes that's great, sometimes it doesn't work out so great, and we're going to talk about that. Sometimes you bring in crops for agricultural use. So things like corn and tomatoes are actually South American crops that we brought here to enjoy, okay? But they're not native plants to this area. And then there's accidental transfer. Um, you know, something was brought, you know, fruit or whatever was brought from a different place, and those seeds make their way into um, our environment and start to grow. And this is one that we have to be very careful about, and this is why we have lots of rules about what you can and can't bring into the country and when it needs to be screened, because that can be a really dangerous thing. I have a picture here. This is chicory. You can find this all over the place in New Jersey, especially this time of year. Really pretty flower, but it's non-native. It actually came from England during the time of the colonists because they weren't able to get tea and coffee. And when you take the root of the chicory plant and dry it, it makes kind of a coffee-like beverage. So they started importing it and planting it in their gardens, and it got out into the environment and got out into the ecosystem. Now, in this case, it's kind of pretty. It doesn't compete against any other plants. It's not pushing out any other plants that are native here. It's able to be eaten by many of the animals that live here, like the deer. Um, heck, you can still use it for tea if you like. Not everything works out that way, though. Non-native species that don't disrupt the biodiversity of the region, that's one thing. It stays pretty localized. It doesn't harm anything. But in the case of invasive species, they do reduce the biodiversity. They force out the plants that are meant to be there, or maybe they can't be eaten by something that lives in the area. I bet a lot of you have had stink bugs around your house this time of year. Stink bugs are an invasive species. There is nothing here that ate them, so they just bred out of control. I have an example here of kudzu. This was a really pretty vine brought over from Japan to use for decorative plantings. And it was all fine until it made its way down into more southern regions where the climate was a little more mild. And then it took off. And it grows extremely quickly. As you can see, it's grown over this person's house, okay? Um, and it takes over an area. And it forces out the other plant life that would be there. And it reduces the biodiversity. So 
we want to be very careful, especially with this project, if we can, to make sure that we're choosing seeds that are native to the area and are not going to cause harm. How do you know what plants to choose? Well, luckily we have the Native Plant Society of New Jersey, which um, has all kinds of information on what are native plants. But there are milkweeds, asters, tons of different beautiful asters, violets, bee bombs, sunflowers, tick seeds, so many other plants that are native to New Jersey and will not harm the environment. To find them, you're just going to go to the website, www.npsnj.org, and I'll post that in the comments. And if you go under Native Plants, Plant Lists, they actually have lists of plants that you can grow in different environments. And I especially love some of these butterfly host plants because I like to support as many of our pollinators as we can. I love identifying butterflies and they're really beautiful. You can also use this website to go to approved vendors um, and gardeners who actually uh, grow these and you can get a list of that. And if you just want to look for plants in your area, here's a native plant gallery that you can click on and find all kinds of plants that are probably already growing in your community that are native to the area. And you can save the seeds from these plants to use next year. For example, things like wild columbine, which is the seed I collected last year and that I'm going to use in my seed bombs now. All right, switch back over to our camera. Okay, so like I said, I have columbine seeds that I collected previously and I just stored them, I dried them and stored them and that's what I'm going to use in my seed bomb this year because I think it's a really lovely plant um, and I know that it's not going to cause any trouble with the environment. It's a nice pollinator um, and they're, they're really pretty. They're one of my favorites. Okay, so how do we make our seed bombs? Very simple. We're going to start by getting our blender. We're going to put two cups of water into our blender. One cup and two cups. All right, then I need about three sheets of paper, okay? And this is pretty forgiving. You don't have to be, you don't have to drive yourself crazy about it. You're just going to tear up your paper, put it in. I like to press it down in there carefully until I don't touch the blade, get it to break down a little bit. Just going to rip it up into small pieces, maybe an inch, two inches. And you can see I'm not, I don't have to be real careful about it. In it goes. The blender is going to do most of the work for me. Right? We're going to just let it do all the work here. Put that in. We add a little bit more. Okay. And, you know, a little goes a long way with this. You're going to get a nice bit of um, paper clay, paper pulp to make your seed bombs with this. Um, but you do want to make sure you tear it up. If you don't, you might bind up the, bind, the blender and you don't want that. So you see I'm just going to push that down so it starts to soak a little bit. If you've ever made paper, this is the same type of thing you would do to make your own decorative handmade papers. Um, and it's basically the same process. We're just molding it into shape instead of pressing it flat. So there we go. I've got my paper in there. Okay. Get this out of the way. If you want to add a little construction paper at this stage, it'll color everything. The ink from the construction paper will color everything. Otherwise, you're going to get um, kind of a gray color like this. That's fine by me because I like to cover mine with, you know, non-toxic temper paint, okay, like these, or with a little bit of leftover tissue paper, upcycled tissue paper from a gift. So I don't care what the color of my, my seed ball looks like. You can, though, um, go ahead and put some construction paper in there if you want to change the color of it, and you can experiment with that a bit. All right. You don't need to put this on high. Regular old blend will do. There we go. We're letting that do the work. If it isn't working out too well, you might need to add more water. Okay, don't worry. We're going to squeeze it out later. All right. That looks pretty good. Now it's up to you how much you want to blend that. I like to get it pretty fine because we want to break down. Remember, we're using mechanical energy to break apart those fibers, release the sticky cellulose from inside that paper so that we can make our clay from it. Let's see, it gets kind of messy. This is what I mean. You want to wash it. All right, here we go. I've got my strainer and I've got a bowl to catch any liquid. 
and in it goes. Oh no, I'm making a mess. Anyway, in it goes. And that's my blender. I'm going to get this out of my way. Just going to put it on the floor. Hopefully I won't kick that and knock it over. All right. So now I've got my, you can see, all the water's draining out, right? And it's kind of a gray mush. Okay, you can see that? Gray mush. And you're just going to want to squeeze it and get some of that water out. Okay? The important thing is you want to get enough water out that you aren't going to start the germination process. You might remember that from um, our newspaper pots episode. You want to get enough water out that you aren't going to start the seeds germinating. But you need to leave a little bit of water so that you can um, still mold this into shapes. So, here we go. This is about right. Okay? It's still squishy and you can mold it. We're going to switch over to my document camera so I can show you the rest. Okay, switching views. Here we go. All right, there we go. There's our, our, our pulp. Okay, squeezing some of that out. All righty. So you're just going to take a little bit, squeeze it. You don't want it completely dry. But you want it kind of dry. We want enough to make about a one inch ball. Okay, get this out of the way. I've just got a little paper plate I'm working on because it's what I have around the office. Maybe get a little more water. Okay, so I've got my little ball and I'm gonna get my seeds. You just want a pinch of seeds, okay? You don't want a ton of seeds because you don't want those um, plants to have to compete with one another, right? When you put them into their new location because then they won't have the resources they need. So, a little pinch of seeds, okay? Not all of them are gonna germinate. And I'm just gonna kind of break my ball up and just kind of catch all my seeds in there, work them in. Okay, you see? And I may not get all of them, that's okay. And I'm just going to work them back in there. Again, keeping, keeping some of the moisture out. So you might need to squeeze out some more water. We do not want these guys to germinate too early. We want them to germinate when we place them, not beforehand. And you just press the seeds in. You make yourself a little ball. Now if you're putting this into like a candy mold or something, same idea, you're just going to press it into that mold. Okay, now I've got some extra seeds. Now one way to decorate is I just have some um, tissue paper left over from a gift I was given and I'm just tearing off some little pieces right pressing it onto the seed ball you can use a little extra water if you need to I'm not seeing that I need to right now just press that paper on you can get really creative with this use multiple colors if you want it's a good way to keep the seeds attached to to your your seed ball there you go. Maybe I've got a little bit more on the back i got to do. Right? And just attach that paper to make a pretty covering for your seed bomb. Okay? Now if you want, you can use something like... I have a tempera paint here. It's a non-toxic. Uh, it's watercolor or water um, soluble. And I just took a paintbrush and just painted my little seed bombs. And I like that. You gotta wait until these are 100% dry though and then paint them. They don't need a lot of paint. And if you're more creative than I, you can probably make these really beautiful. You can make them smiley faces or little earths or whatever you can imagine. So you can have a lot of fun with that. Bag them up and give them as a nice gift, okay? All right, here we go. Okay, so that's the basics of making a seed bomb. And like I said, you're going to have plenty that you can use. It's also fun to um, use herb seeds in that. A lot of butterflies enjoy herbs, especially things like dill. And it can be a quick and easy way to start a garden. You can give them to someone and just say, oh, put a couple of these into your container on your deck. Okay, when you're ready to use them, you want to wait until you know it's going to rain in the next couple of days because that water, you want to get this process started and you're just going to throw them into the area, or you can disrupt the soil a little bit and place them. That will help them grow faster. But they're pretty hardy. You can keep them on you, and they're great for container plants. They're great for the garden. They're great for all those little areas that you might see that just need a little color or that you don't want the dirt to wear away, and they're really great for attracting wonderful animals and insects to your area. So that's the basics of seed bombs. I hope that you try them. If you do and you make some really beautiful seed bombs, remember to take a picture and put it up for us and hashtag Warren Lib, okay, so that we get to see all your amazing things that you're creating. All right, 
Um, I will be back next week for the Warren County Library. Um, on Monday, we have Maker Monday at 2 p.m. We will be making bubble wrap art. So get some bubble wrap from some of your packages maybe that you've gotten recently and bring some paint and we're going to have some fun. And then next Friday, again, 2 p.m., will be Friday Steam. And we'll be learning about sound and the incredible invention made here in New Jersey, the phonograph. Okay, I look forward to seeing you all. My name is Sandy Roberts. I'm the Makerspace Coordinator for the Warren County System. I miss all of you so much, and I can't wait to get back into the Makerspace so we can all be together doing this again. But in the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep making wonderful things. Take care, guys. I'll see you soon. Oh, look, did that work? There we go. <laughs> <laughs>